right, so I have the sketch. I don't know if you can see it, it's very pale. And um, <laughs> there you go, that's good. All right, now it's very light and pale because you don't want the pencil to show through. Um, just enough for you to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the area that I'm going to be working in the in the sky and I already have Prussian uh, blue, Aurelian yellow, and Alizarin crimson that I'm going to be working on today. I think last week we worked with raw sienna. You can do that too. I'm just going to experiment and see what Aurelian yellow does. Always looking for a great combination. And uh, so I'm just going to make it nice and wet so that when I put the washes in, they'll flow smoothly. Now this might be what you struggle with, Sue. If you're working on the tilt, it helps because it, it draws the, um, mm -hmm. it just it flows the um, watercolor better. It, you don't have to make it flow. It'll flow on its own. Okay, so let's start with a wash of Aurelian and Alizarin. And I'm just going to lay it in there. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. nice and strong. And the reason is because last time I did this, the value just wasn't strong enough. Now I'm going to use the side of the brush to do the ragged edge of the cloud. Remember that? The cloud's mm -hmm. dry, so I'll get a nice ragged edge. It's already drying pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you're running into that problem, you can just wet it again, like throw a little bit more water on it. You have to be careful about these because they're going to run down there. Okay. And then I'm just going to do the ragged um, side of the brush again to get the tops of the waves need to have a little more raggediness. And then also I covered over my, because um, my painting's so light, I covered over the little spray here. One here too. Now, while it's still wet, well, you could wait for it to dry, but while it's still wet, I'm just going to throw the uh, Prussian blue right on top of it. And I go across in horizontal strokes. Don't go over and over and over it. You just lay it in. You don't want to mix it up on the paper. If you go over it and over it, you're mixing on the paper um, and messing the washes up. This way they lay side by side nicely. And uh, I'm gonna pick that up with a thirsty brush. And that, and that. Okay, so that's the start. That's a little strong, but there we go. So hopefully, I don't know if that's gonna be dark enough. I probably need to go a little bit more. So I'm gonna do it while I have the chance. So I'm just going to lay a mix of alizarin and Prussian on top of this just to give it one more swipe. See how wet it is? It's still reacting nicely and flowing nicely. I'm barely touching the paper so that I don't get um, the colors mixing on the paper. What color is underneath again? Uh, alizarin crimson and aurelian yellow. And then I'm going to go in with a I'm going to do the um, horizon, the, the, the water that's behind this wave. It's a little bit darker, but not a whole lot. So I'm just going to use more pigment of the same. Prussian blue, alizarin crimson. And I don't think I'm going to put the yellow in. I see how it goes if I just do this. And it's a really strong, uh, very dry brush so that it will stay. And that's a little too colorful, so I'm going to throw a little yellow in it. Gray it up a bit. There we go. Still colorful, but I'm just going to let it go. Let's see, a little more yellow. There we go. Now it seems really dark, right? But you know that watercolor dries 20% lighter. So I'm counting on the fact that it's going to dry a little bit lighter. Suck these up. And now comes the little tiny, we think it's a sun or a moon rising above the horizon. And I'm just going to pull that out with a clean, thirsty brush. I just touched it with my paintbrush, and out comes the light. 
It's a dry brush, right? Very dry. Keep squeezing the water out. And you just touch it and it just sucks the color right out. And then there's this uh, reflection. The reflection starts out small and then gets wider as you come toward the um, viewer. So, And if you want, you can add a little dot of yellow to that. Do you all remember this from last week? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So that's a lot clearer than his. Um, but I wanted to make it clear because I, because I can. So I, you can always later, if you feel it's too clear, um, go over it, wash over it, smudge it a little bit. Okay, so that's the first step. You can stop that. <laughs> to the edges, yeah. But not beyond. Okay. Because if I went beyond, it would just go all over the okay. place and it would be too much. You don't have any control that way. So you said again that the whole area you covered was wet with water? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did I say something? I missed the beginning. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, I covered every area that's covered right now was with clear water first. I didn't wet this area, just the area that I'm working in. Okay, so you can do the same thing if you want. You can start by wetting this cloud. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, wet, then I, this is pretty wet, so if you put water right up to the edge, you're probably going to get a, a tiny little blossom because it's going to push the water out see it's starting to do that which is okay because it, it'll create a look of um, water and wave so in this case it's okay if you didn't want that to happen then you wouldn't want to we'd wait until this was dry so I'm just gonna wet the cloud the not the cloud the um, what's it called again yeah a wave <laughs> this the two waves this one and that one the one in front no actually I'm just gonna work on the one in front because that one's lighter if I wet both of them, then the dark would go into this one and I wouldn't get that light effect. So I'm just going to wet the one cloud with water. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, just the three colors together, the alizarin. Let's see, and I'll test it on here to see if I like it. That's kind of a neutral gray, which is it's a little more lavendery, I think. So I'm going to throw a little more red in it. Just a tiny bit of red. Red goes a long way, so you just want to do a little bit of red. Oh, didn't go well far enough. Let's put a little bit more. And if I lighten it, and more red. Okay. That ought to do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so a lot of water. Well, maybe not, because I already have wet the cloud, so not a lot of water on your brush. So when you put it down, it'll be a soft, now that's too red, go back to gray a little bit, there we go. In this corner, it's really dark, so I'm just going to mm -hmm. fill it in nice and dark. And because it's wet, I'm getting nice soft edges, right? Mm -hmm. If it were dry, what I would color were you using? All three mixed together to make a gray. And so I'm just going to go to the areas that are darkest first. And I notice that there's like a light right there, and then there's a light right there. See the lights mm -hmm. right there and right there. So you want to just be mindful of that. I'm kind of going back and forth with the colors. I'm not sticking to just one solid gray. Now that seems super dark, right? Yeah. But you do that with the side of your brush. Again. The side of my brush. Okay. Yeah, I rarely yeah. ever use the point. Only when I'm doing detail. And this is not the time that you do detail. That's so. My mistake. <laughs> okay. So and this goes all the way to the top. Seems dark now, but once you get the rock in and all the other elements, it starts to look right. It will correct. Okay, I'm just uh, gently putting in, leaving some whites, just like you did in, when we did the water. You're leaving um, white pops coming through. Just a little bit more all the way through, because there's really no pure, pure white. This is the pure white right here. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so that's my wave. have a little more of a crusty edge so I'm gonna use the side of the brush to pull out some color there we go 
This I'm seeing is like a really problem area. So later at the very end, we can scrub that and because there's really no points to a cloud. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. oh, look at how the run back is happening in the water. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Something that would never happen in oil painting, which I love that watercolor does. How come it's doing that? Going uphill. Okay. <laughs> does anybody know why that's happening? No. I, not by gravity. Why not? Oh, oh. it is by gravity. Well, is when, the when there's a when there's yeah. a bead of water, it pops back. Up. It pushes the color up. Oh, oh it separates it. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. The and color the is denser. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, no. but <laughs> but you know that now. <laughs> I know that that would happen. Yeah, that if you don't want that to happen, you have to really be on top of those beads. Like if I had at the bottom a big, um, thick thing of water, if you're working on the tilt. And I let it just go; it would leave a giant blossom at the bottom of the page. So you really wow. have to, you have to. Uh, if you don't want blossoms, you got to be really careful. Kim, can I? I kind of do want to blossom here. I'm going to put some water on top of this, oh, like and make and create some interesting blossomy areas. So you wait a little bit to do this, and just before it, the glisten goes off the page, you can you can add texture to your wave by just popping water in. See what's happening? The water's mm -hmm. pushing the. Um, cloud um, colors away. I'm just gonna, and I don't want to have all little dots. I don't want to have a polka dotted cloud, so you can add a little bit more. Okay. Don't want a line. Okay. So by doing that, I lost my dark. I have to go back in later. Darn it. And I got these lines happening, which are not so hot. Okay. So there. I just picked those up with a thirsty brush. All right, so then we're going to move on to this part of the water. Do you all remember how we did that? Yeah. Didn't we wet it and just put in some lines going like wave-like lines? Yeah, you want yeah. your wave to go in this direction. You don't want it to go up and down. So when you put your strokes in, you're going to be going in the direction the waves are so that you know you'll have that directional um, flow in your painting. And didn't we put in yellow? Didn't we lay in the yellow? Part? Yes. Very good. You have a good memory, dear. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to lay in a very light wash of yellow. Hopefully that's the right. Yeah, there we go. Lighter up here because there's not a whole lot of yellow up there. But there's an, oops, I'm going right over my cloud or my wave. There we go. It's okay. He can have a little yellow on him. And, and down here it gets a little stronger. Oops, I don't want to go over my grandfather beard either. So easy to do when you're so light with your pencil. Okay, grandfather beard. There. That's just pure aurelian? No, it's aurelian mixed with a little bit of alizarin. Oh, oh, and then while it's wet, I'm just going to go um, into my paint, and I might mix a little of the phthalo. I'm going to test and see how it looks. That's yeah, pretty good. Okay, so with a very dry brush, you might want to dry the the base where it meets the um, what's this thing mm -hmm. called the ferrule? What is that thing called? Oh, I forget. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Um, and I'm just going to go on the side of the brush. I'm going to go over my little. Uh, wave um, with a raggedy, you want that raggedy edge, and you can't make that with the point of a brush. I guess you could, but it would look really contrived. So you want it to look very natural, and that's why I use the side of the brush because it paints it for me. I don't have to do it. it does a much better job than I could ever do. Okay, so and then I'm just going to leave little um, yellow um, lines going in this direction. Uh, just you make blobs basically and you're letting you're not going all the way over so that you get these little uh, oops it's already drying look at that you don't, can't work in that area it's already dry so you can only work in areas that are still wet so you'll have to come back later and re-wet it and do it again you said phthalo blue but is that Prussian blue? I meant Prussian okay. sorry phthalo will work too You just have to do a lot more mixing. It's already really dry on top, so I have to stop. 
I'll just soften these edges up a little bit by wetting them. You can just touch the area around them with water and then touch the edges and you'll get a nice soft uh, edge instead of those hard edges because there wouldn't be any hard edges in the water. You have to use a pretty dry brush because if your brush is really wet with water, it's going to drip down in the... Yeah. And oh, so you're lifting it. Basically, I'm wetting this area and then touching the edge. Oh, so I'm, okay. it's almost okay. like I'm using a thirsty brush mm -hmm. to just soften the edge. And um, the, there's also a risk of making it look kind of polka dotish, so you have to be really careful to be random with your um, the blobs. Don't you think baby, daddy, mama, aunt, uncle, but just make sure everyone, every blob is. One's really long, one's short, one's little, one's fat, but they're all going in the same direction. Okay, so that's really dry now. I have to wait. You ready? Yeah. We're back. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do this, since I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm just gonna go back to this cloud. I know it's still a little wet there, but that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, it's not gonna hurt anything if I bleed into the water. It, when you're working with water and um, waves, if there's a little bleeding and a, lot, a little blossom, it's okay. So actually, I think I probably should wet that first with clean water, not blue water. I'm going to just get almost right up to the edge. Some edges I'm going to let go through and some I'm going to leave dry. That's so I'll get some hard and soft edges. Okay, so here's a dry brush. Clean, uh, uh, make it dry at the ferrule. It is a ferrule. That's what you call it. Sorry. Uh, and you're just going to blob in the shadows on this. You squint. If you're having trouble seeing the shadows, squint. It really helps you see the where they are. It simplifies them and makes them a lot easier to, to see. This one goes right through. That one goes right through. So that's that. And then we're going to move on down to the rock. The rock. Okay, so the rock, how did I do the rock? Let's see. I think I did the rock similar to the sky. So I used a lot of alizarin crimson and a lot of um, aurelian yellow. I think that's how I did it. And I started, you can wet the rock first if, you're, if you don't want to get streaks. Uh, it wouldn't be so bad to get streaks with uh, this rock because it is streaky. You just want to work in the direction that the rock um, formations are moving. And they're very horizontal, just like the water. It's parallel. Mm -hmm. There's some nice mirrors that are happening in the painting, and you want those to happen. So, seems crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> And you could either put the thalo blue right on top of that or wait for it to completely dry. Thalo this is, or Prussian? Prussian. Um, this is what I was talking about with that bead of water. Oh, if yeah. I just let it sit there, it yeah. would create a blossom mm -hmm. back onto my rock, which would not be a horrible thing. I like blossoms, but some people just really scared of them. So you just pick it up with a thirsty brush. You don't want to blot because mm -hmm. then you take the color away from your picture. And you can create blossoms that way too. So. You could swipe, but don't block. All right, I'm going to leave that to dry, and then I'm just going to go over it with, uh, I'm going to do a glaze on that for the rock. Okay, so. I think last time. Last, last time, time we did do that. Heavy blue, mm -hmm. dark blues, mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, so, so you can see there's well. many different yeah. ways to approach. I the like painting. the underpainting of the, the, the yellow and the orange because that's what I see in the picture, mm -hmm. like in the sky and the rocks right. too. So. Yeah. Well, you know, there's never any guarantee that when you do these things, they're gonna, it's going to turn out and make, you're going to make a beautiful painting. <laughs> um, I create so many duds before I create a good one. So, I mean, uh, you know, you think that the, the great artists never make a dud, but you're only oh. seeing their best work. Yeah, you're not seeing right. all the stuff that went before it. So, okay, I'm going to try to do, I don't know what I did here. If that's the drawing, I guess that's the wave. I guess I covered most of it up. <sighs> that's frustrating. Okay, well, I'm just going to, 
I'm going to use the purest form of Prussian to do this this way and, and lightly because this is lighter than this, right? Yeah. These, this uh, mm -hmm. pearl is a lot lighter. So you want to make sure that you're not too dark. And um, you can use the point. I guess it's because it's a small area. But I'm, you want to get that motion of the waves curling. So you want to move like this with your brush. On the side you can move, you'll get a little dry brush action and you'll get that feel of a wave if you go like that instead of like straight up and down. It's the way the wave is curling over. Okay, so I'm just going to fill it in with, the, and then leave the light around it. Now you want to have a little bit of white above it. I don't have too much but I have a tiny bit and then you want to have these little white lines between, but they can't be perfectly, his are almost perfectly mm -hmm. separated, which makes it a little bit, it works, I don't know why, it shouldn't, but um, you want to stay away from that. So make sure your wave has an outline and a nice big, look at that, it looks like yeah. grandpa's beard, doesn't it? So there we go. Okay. I'm just going to do the crusty bottom. And then at the bottom of that, I'm seeing some yellow. So I'm just going to pop mm. in a tiny bit of yellow while it's wet at the bottom. Not a lot because you're going to, it's going to overtake. But what is that noise? Is that somebody's phone? There. So that's that. So at this point, the, the painting doesn't look like anything. You're like, oh my God, how is this ever going to turn into anything nice? But um, you just have to, you have to just trust that it will in the long run if you just keep at it. And most of you quit right when you're getting to the good stuff, you know? So you gotta, you gotta press through. All right, so right now, really, the whole thing is too wet to work on. So either I use a blow dryer, which I'm going to do. So this, at this part, you can turn. Okay, so it has to be bone dry if you Thank wanna re-wet it and work on something again. Also, if you don't wanna create mud. Best way to create mud is if you continue to work on it while it's still wet or not quite dry. It's just, I don't know why that happens, it just doesn't work. So um, blow dry it. But don't really blow dry it until after um, it's set. If you blow dry it before it's set, you're pushing the paint in all different directions and it kind of ruins the wash. So, all right, so I'm done gonna go around Grandpa's beard, which is this thing right here. <coughs> We've labeled it that just so you want to label things so you can um, keep the shape. Don't lose that shape. It becomes more important and then you remember it and you don't cover it over. I'm not just being silly. I, that's, there's a reason behind why I call it <laughs> Grandpa's Pierre. I'm glad we're getting your fun cake. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to really wet it because something, yeah. just this week, wow. we've had a lot of. Um, dryness and everything my paints are drying so much faster than they normally do so now I'm just going to go over it with um, some Prussian and I'm mixing a little bit of the um, alizarin crimson in there but um, I just need to add a little bit of yellow too I'm just I'm just going to do a tiny bit grain toning down the color just a little bit see how it works I'll know as soon as I put it in there if it's the wrong color and then I'll try to change it until it's right. But you should probably try to make this the color, a mixture color before you put it, the wet on the paper because it's going to dry pretty quick. So I'm just doing the darkest part that's really dark right here. And then it's going to dry too light, so I'm going to have to darken it up just a bit more. So alizarin and Prussian together make a really dark dark. Are they about equal? It looks like, um, it looks blue. like probably more blue because it's blue water. Yeah. It's not. If it were red, I would use more okay. red. That's right. So there we go. See, obviously, look how light that dried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just gonna bring it on down around the beard, and then I'm gonna start lightening it as I go along, and going in this motion here of. Strokes. Is now, this Hopper's work? Uh, Winslow Homer. Oh, Winslow. Oh. 
You were you not here? You weren't here last week, Annie. Mm -mm. A couple mm. weeks. Yeah. I've been sick for two oh, weeks. Oh, honey. I haven't um, had it for seven years, so oh. I hate it when it happens. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna lighten it up even more because it gets Next really light down here. Yeah. Okay. All right, and now this area, I'm going to do it again. I have to re-wet it. So I'm just going to wet right up to this edge here. That's just water. Just water. And then I'm just going to go over this. Maybe with a little more pure color. from the still getting hard edges. It's really weird. I'm gonna get hard edges up here but I'm gonna soften these. Right up to the beard. If you're over ever over down by Cardinal or uh, these by Chelsea's on Cardinal, the gallery next to it. Mm -hmm. They have some beautiful paintings of water. Really? Mm -hmm. I'll have to go take a peek. Oh, wait, excuse me. Um, Seascapes. Are they a local Maine. painter? Um, no, a gentleman from Maine who was in the Caribbean too, so they're painting. The ones I saw were from the Caribbean and from, from Bahamas and mm. from Maine. Nice. And there, sounds like Homer. It does. He was in the Bahamas. Yeah, that's right. Probably followed Homer, and did did what he did. Okay, I'm just gonna go right up there and change the shape of that little. Some are wave. oil, but some of them are watercolor. And then maybe down here a little bit. There you go. Okay. Recording. <laughs> I'm recording it. I'll send. I'll post it on YouTube when it's all done. <laughs> Okay, so, um, all right, so that's where I would stop that. And then you want to get the shadows. Yeah. See how the, the yeah. um, beard, mm -hmm. just like this, has shadow, and there's light on the top of the beard. Oh, I can mm -hmm. see. You did the yeah. whole beard. Yeah. So, so are you, just are you going to just leave this part of the, you'll put that in later? Oh, yeah, I guess I, I, yeah, I wasn't looking, but yeah, I, didn't cover that up with water, which I should do. I should do that right now. Let's do that now. She's talking about this part. I didn't just cover, didn't do any water over here, so it's dry. So I'm just gonna. This is how you do it if you forget to wet. <laughs> um, I'll show you how to I'll do it again. You just rinse your brush, clean it um, with clear water, and then you go around it with water, and then touch the edge really lightly, and you get this nice soft edge. Then you have to go on the middle, and like I said, not too wet of a brush. It has to be just wet enough to to stay on the paper, but not so wet that it yeah. totally takes it away. Now that's a totally different blue than this, so later if I feel I want to change it, I can always glaze over it with a yellow and the <coughs> red to tone it down. But I'm going to leave it for now okay. because I may like it later. Okay. Now for the beard um, shadowing, that is very pale, and uh, again, you might want to wet it, but it's but uh, let's just see what happens if I use the side of the brush, very pale, and just sort of put it in. It's going to be shadowed from bottom up, but not at, leave room at the top for light. So you cover the bottom light. You don't want to have light down there. It wouldn't make sense. You bring it up with the side of your brush, hopefully random, circles. yeah, and circles so I don't get like a okay. striped. Oh, cool. Circles. Sort of following the contour of the beard. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then um, while I still have it wet here, I could possibly pop in a little dark, not too dark because you don't want it to be darker than the rock, but just to show that um, it has weight and it's it's on top of something. 
-hmm. starting to have dimension now. Mm -hmm. It's a little dark up here, too. Like it was wearing a belt. Yeah. <laughs> Santa Claus is belt instead of beard. <laughs> there we go. See how the shadow gives it dimension? Yeah. If you don't have shadow, you don't have much dimension. Okay, so um, I guess we could move on to, back to the rock. Feels dry. We dried it, right? I can't remember if I dried it or not. Losing track. Okay, back to Prussian blue. I'm going to glaze over this with some Prussian blue. Well, you don't get it when you glaze it. You no. You put water on it. You could. It. Okay. But I want to have um, some stripes and stuff. So. Okay. And I'm probably going to have to go over this dark. You have to go over sometimes um, more than once. So that's pretty already. And I'm going to leave some pops of red shining mm -hmm. through. I can always cover those up later, but. Is that straight Russian blue? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Because I have the red and yellow underneath, mm -hmm. it's um, toning it down. If I didn't, it would be like mm -hmm. crazy. And you don't wet your brush first before you put the brush in, but you just go right into the I didn't wet the brush. surface, no. And yummy, you don't wet the blue part in there. Okay, so it's definitely not going to be dark enough. So at this point I can add, and I'm using the side of my brush again. And I just want to put some darker mm -hmm. strokes in there while I can. now and I can go over that later. Hmm. Okay. See it's starting to come together now. Look before it looked kind of crazy and now it's starting <laughs> starting to read. Still needs to go further but it's getting there. Wow the water looks great. It looks better than mm -hmm. this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean this of part. Course. This part back here. I, I love that. that. <laughs> I think you're uh, much better. Santa's beard and the way right there looks really pretty. Santa's beard looks good mm -hmm. from back here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can see that I need to. Um, I'm just gonna let those drips happen. I kind of like that. This is, after all, a watercolor, not an oil. So you can let things like this. Ha you don't have to copy this mm -hmm. exactly. You just let things happen that are watercolory. That's so, gonna be darker. Yeah. That. This. That one. Yeah. Look so at the edge with, against the white underbelly thing. You know so what I mean? point, it, point out to me what Sorry. you're doing. Right here. This is too light yes. compared to that. Yeah. Look at how dark and the when light is. And when it goes darker, it's going to bring, yeah. it's going to make mm -hmm. that, but then you have to go darker here too. Okay. So, yeah. Right. Uh, mm. yeah. So at this point, um, it's good to stand back and, and see those things so that you don't either overwork it. Sometimes you can get away with just stopping mm -hmm. and not going all the way to the end. And um, if your friends are saying, oh my God, that, you know, they're going on and on about it, that's the time to stop. So <laughs> uh, sometimes it's hard to know. Okay, I'm going to go on top of this with some phthalo because uh, I think Prussian. that it, yeah, Prussian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting on directing you for that. Yes, recording. I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> it's not important. I, it's something that I really struggle with remembering to say that you know that this is not a cloud; it's a wave. <laughs> and uh, I'm using Prussian. Paint. It is. It's really hard. I mean, words don't. I mean, that's left brain. So it, again, yeah. you didn't put water. I didn't put on. water on this one. I'm using the side of the brush, okay. and I'm just uh, doing a lot of squinting. So that it's I don't to go when to, I'm lightening up as I come in here. Now, what's the reason you don't put water on it in this case? First? I want to have, um, I just want to have some hard edges there because okay. it's in front and, okay. uh, you know, not, not, it's not a really dark color that I'm using. So a little hard um, dry brush is, isn't going to hurt. Okay, over here we're just going to, I know it's more red, but. It might still be red if I just do a pale blue glaze over it. Oh my gosh, that totally mm -hmm. changed. Yeah. It's amazing what oh. the shadows will do. That and this beautiful. one too. That little that little guy just popped right out. Yep. He's got a little bit of shadowing on there too. Talk, she's got it. You want Here, that's fine. All my oh yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. 
<laughs> Makes me look like a rock star. <laughs> you are. I don't know if I need to do this again, but I'm just seeing a little bit more uh, variation. If you put, like, you don't cover up all your underpainting <coughs> and you put another um, value in, it starts to give it more dimension to you. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why the thing popped. Oh my God. And it's a harder edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Between that dark. Oh, mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. Okay. So. All right, so where do I need to go now, ladies? Tell me. The rock? More red in the rock. The rock. Mm -hmm. And darker. Yeah. And I'm thinking I need to go a little bit darker right in here, too. So mm -hmm. it's not dry, mm -hmm. not bone dry. So I'm going to blow dry it again. Ready? Yes. All right, so um, it's all dry. It's been an hour and uh, we're ready to work on it again. And now that I've had a chance to sit back and look at it, I'm noticing that I need to go darker with my rock and uh, probably a little more dark in there and uh, just a few little finishing touches. So, um, any questions before I start? Do you agree that I need to go darker with my rock? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Oh, she hasn't left yet. <laughs> you ran out and said goodbye and you were in the bathroom. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so I'm just, oops, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do, uh, just put the, the uh, Prussian down there to see if it was going to be too blue. And uh, yeah, it is. So I'm gonna add a little red to it. I hope I see the moisture. Okay. Alizarin crimson. And I want to leave some underpainting popping through. I think I'm going to switch to a bigger brush too. I don't want to be so nitpicky with a round brush. I'm going to my square brush. See that? That's what I used the first time. Yeah. And um, you can just do broader, more block-like strokes with it. With the brush. Uh, it might you do it again. See, right there. This. So why would, I don't think that matters. If you I, just ignore I, mean, it. I can't see it as well, but I couldn't I, it, it go yeah, figure out how to go get away. rid of it. But, it'll okay. go away. So. Okay. Okay, are we still recording? Yeah. Okay. So we're using this big square brush because I want to get a more block-like effect, the, the shapes of the rocks. And I don't want to cover up, hopefully I might not cover up all my underpainting. I want some of it to show through so I don't get this flat rocky surface. So I'm going to use thin strokes. I turn the brush on its side. I turn it on its, on its, uh, on the flat part. And I'm just going to go over and hopefully come up with something that looks like a rock. So I'm not trying to copy that exactly. I'm just getting the feel of it. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and maybe glaze over later with some reds and, and yellows. Mm. Um, all right, so I'm just stand back. I always stand back and take a look. All right. Better. Yeah, it's a better. We're, this is reading as coming forward. It's mm -hmm. more contrasty. Maybe more red. Isn't the it? rock, yeah, possibly. And that, that's why I think I might have to glaze over afterwards with red and yellow. But uh, you can't do it now. you got to wait you for can't. it to dry. No. no. It'll just oh. be muddy. Okay. So you want to, um, I just don't want to. I, I want to make sure that I've got it dark enough, and if I start fiddling, it might grow lighter, and a big mess will be created. So I'm going to take it slow on this. Now I'm going to go into my, I'm gonna, I need to darken this area, I think, a little bit. And this area right here. Mm -hmm. And shape up that little wave a little bit, soften some edges, and then I hopefully will be done. We'll see. So I'm going to put the first stroke down and see if it's the right color. No, that's too gray. So try it over here. A little more blue. Good. 
So if it's too gray, you just put more pure pigment in and that'll make it less gray. Oh, and I'm going on dry paper, darn it. Okay, I'm gonna wet my uh, wavy area. Just wet right there. With clear water. I bet you guys never forget to do this. <laughs> Which time? <laughs> I just want to get really wet because we're having a lot of trouble with uh, drying and I don't want everything to dry before I get to it. Make mm -hmm. sure I wet it. Some area that's hard to tell so you got to look, look for the glisten and spots that you might have missed. Okay, back to now what no, it's wet. You're going to have to use a little bit drier brush so that it doesn't go all over the place. Especially working on the tilt, you want to make sure you're um, not too wet because it'll drip down. Okay, and then stand back a lot because you're getting toward the end and you don't want to over, overdo. So I'm going to go right up to shaping the waves. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm oh, shaping it. Oh, that's gorgeous right there. God, I just love you. Can you stand behind me? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, look at that. Right, that is the point of yeah. Yeah, perfect focus, right? Highest contrast. So you can't do this everywhere. You've got to really pick and choose. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing, I'm standing back so I can see where the values are so that I don't over paint it. I just need something right here. Tie it together. I'm barely touching the paper. just looks right in the foreground. Good. I mean, what a difference for the... Okay, so this part is dark too, and I lost the dark there. So I'm going back and leaving some of that underpainting as my squiggles, you know, the squiggly mm -hmm. part of the foam, whatever that is. And make sure your directions are in the diagonal. You gotta really keep on top of that. Ooh, starting to dry. Mm. But see how you can take it yeah. and um, mm. keep working on it and keep refining it. This is really gray down in here. It's not blue. It's kind of dry too. Not too dry. I think everything dripped down a little bit. So. too far. I think I covered up too much in my white. Keep that back. Okay. Just a little bit more right here. shape that up that kind of got out of okay now I want to stop for a minute and um, my scrubby my beautiful oh. scrubby can I borrow somebody yes. that was a, um, I want it's okay Nancy. <laughs> there's plenty to go around thank you so mm -hmm. much Joan all right so scrubby that's this really stiff brush it's like a um, super stiff like um, what would you like a stencil brush it's kind of really short bristles and brush, it's yeah. even stiffer than a toothbrush. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to brush your teeth with that. Sorry, it's like a nail good. brush almost. Yeah. And um, so you want to have a clean scrubby because what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to scrub off some of the paint and create sort of a misty feel with it. So I'm rinsing the water, I mean rinsing the brush really well, make sure there's nothing in it. And you're just going to lightly scrub an area to create that misty effect. 
and then swipe in that direction and you get sort of a mist coming off. You gotta be careful it's not too contrived looking, so you wanna make it a little bit more random and not so pointy. And then get rid of this edge right here. There we go. Yeah, it's a little too straight. Okay. And then soften these edges here. This is a great edge softening tool. If you have too many hard edges, it reads as a more like a cutout than actually something that's real. So I'm just going along the edges with the scrubby and softening. Do you see um, in the beard? The beard? This part, the, mm -hmm. the shadow of the beard, should be more like two different tones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably have to go into the beard one more time. Because when they squint, it looks just one tone. Uh, it doesn't look as real as it. I don't know. So you don't want to get rid of all the hard edges. You just want to make sure you get rid of some of them. And then remember to stand back so you're not going too crazy. Yeah. And I lost my white here. I'm just bringing it back. I have fibers in the in the um, brush. You get these little paper fibers because it's actually marring the surface of the paper. So you have to be careful not to overdo. Okay. Over here, I'm also seeing a little bit too many hard edges. So you can actually you can actually bring more of the uh, wave in or reshape the wave a little bit if you got a little too much of a unusual shape that you don't like. You can add to it and soften it. See how softening it makes it look less like a cutout and more yeah. like a, something that's incorporated into the painting? I should have bought stock in the scrubby. I think it's really <laughs> yeah. an amazing tool. soften every single one of them, but you do want to soften a lot of them. This one over here, it's kind of unnatural. And then this weird triangular shape. <laughs> we'll just let that be fun. This is too sharp. This is too sharp. Too sharp, you say? Too sharp of an edge. Mm -hmm. This is too sharp. No sharp edges in water. Well, I shouldn't say that. That's not true. Okay. And then this one. There'll be no white there. Some shadow. Okay, it should start. This is actually too sharp right here, too. Okay. Do you see the difference when uh -huh. you start softening? How mm -hmm. it starts to look more natural? Uh -huh. So there's, it's really important to do that.
You can even do that in a rock if you want to pull out some lights oh, in the yeah. rock. Um, let's say, I'm not going to, I'm just doing it for you to see, but you could lightly scrub it in an area so you can get some, a little bit of light on a rock. Let's say you have a dark rock and light was hitting it somewhere. You could do that. If you have a color in the sky that you're not really crazy about, you can very lightly, very lightly go over it with your scrubbies and very lightly scrub. Oops, I just made a big mark in my sky. Don't do that. This is what not to do. It's tricky then. Because now if you paint over that because it's a, a marred surface, will it take the paint differently? I, the one I don't like is this orange in the cloud. So there's so many things you can, the, the wave, not the cloud. So many things you can do. Okay. All right. I don't like this either. I'm just going crazy with the scrubby today. But you can't paint over it what you scrub. Yeah, you can. Oh, you can? Yeah, you just have to wait for it to dry. Yeah. Okay. All right. So am I finished or do I need to keep I think going? You're done. You sure? Annie, do I need to do another variation on my um, grandfather beard? I think? got it. Me either. All right, let's, let's quit. Do you it. see it not? Yeah, I see another, another. Uh, it's not another layer of color. Not, let's um, just do one more shadow. Let's see if I get the right shadow here. Too dark. Oh, even that helped. Yeah, I think it was too um, flat. Yeah, like um, too consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, like it was all a marshmallow with the bottom <laughs> yeah. gotten too toasted in a in a row. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks really good. And then this right here is uh, too light. And I shouldn't do this because you really need to wait for it to dry, but just for the sake of the video, <laughs> it should be all right. Can you redden up the rack too, or not? Oh yeah, I think it is dry, isn't it? Or isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of dry. Let's do that. It seems like it would, um, more part of the painting. This is red in that left it doesn't cloud. show up much, does it? No, you've got to really use it strong over the blue. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. Oops, that's okay. really red. Ah, yellow. So that's going to dry a lot less bright because it's on this blue. Right now it's sitting on top, but mm. I think that's going to be enough. We'll just see. Don't you think that really adds a lot? Or no? I don't know. I, I, I won't know until it dries. I think it yeah. might. So you don't want to cover it all over because then you'll mm. have, uh, it'll go flat. So yeah. you have to be careful to just do parts. So let's wait for it to dry and... If you wanted to do this the way it is, you'd have to do dry brush to get that texture. And so you definitely have to wait. And then you almost have to plan where you're going to go with it. Mm -hmm. Because it's definitely a really white area, which kind I forgot. Like what we did with the shoreline, where we just yes. brushed it into it like that. Yeah. So, any questions any comments oh you know what I forgot this is so important and very easy to forget is my little shape right here oh I like that little negative yeah, shape yeah now it's too hard right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what do we do Soften the edges. <laughs> so I'm just taking clear water and rubbing it around Getting this part wet and then going right up to the edge, right up to the edge gently, and it softens it right up. Isn't that amazing? So I may have to go over that a few times too because uh, it's only one pass. I'll put a little blue in it. There. 
I think it's a little higher too. Yeah. It kind of helps the, yeah, the really horizon helps. line. I think I'm a little too low and that's why it's disturbing. But if you go right at the horizon line with it, like uh, right here, seems to make more sense, right? It brings it across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. You stuck yes. that in there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. Right. you're really. right. Yeah, I'm you know the what? Right the All of a sudden now it looks like a wave uh, instead yes. of you need that instead of a cloud. cloud. Instead yeah. of a cloud. Yeah. Yeah, because it's in front of the water. Okay. Right. Done. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>